their eyes out, okay? And I'm just gonna give you my, and you may not agree with it, I don't care, this is just my, my thing. There's all kinds of different coaching philosophies and things, and I think you gotta sift through everything, take the good from each and make it your own. But the process of developing high-end hand or skills, let's just take one drill for example. If we're learning something new, the pattern is this. First, I gotta learn the pattern slow and methodical. Don't, we don't care about the speed, we don't care if they're looking. I want them looking at it. And a lot of the drills that I do are based on where they start the ball or puck in line with one of their feet, then they're doing a quick dribble and going to the other foot, okay? So it's one, two, fake, left. Slow and methodical. Then once they can do it mistake-free where they're hitting their marks, then we start increasing the speed. Once they can do it at a faster rate without making mistakes, then we start working on the vision training. And what I do is stick an object about 10, 12 feet out in front of them, a couple of them, and they can still see the ball or puck out of the corner of their eye, but they're looking at that object. And the other thing is, <coughs> make sure, especially with younger players, you're very clear on how you're communicating, getting your eyes up. Because what I've found is a lot of players think that it's this field of vision, they're up. They can't see the puck, okay? In reality, you're looking at the, you can see the puck, and then I'm about waist down because when you play the game of hockey, you really what you're identifying is the color of the socks that you're playing, the other team. They got different color socks, you know that that's, that's danger. So that's kind of the field of vision here where I can see out, I know I'm aware of what's out here, but I can also see the puck uh, out of the corner of my eye. Um, I'm just gonna beat this. I've heard time and time again from coaches that we work hard, but are not very skilled. Most players can skate well, but struggle when they get the puck. Why is this? I'd suggest using a stopwatch, okay? So here's what I mean by that. Um, they've done studies with the, the best players in the world. I think they did the study was in the Olympics, and that's when uh, maybe Gretzky was there. But they tracked puck possession in the Olympics of the best players in the world. In games, they have the puck in their stick right around the one minute. That's it. The best players in the world, right? Practices, and this is what the stopwatch is, I would encourage you to get a parent or one of your assistant coaches that sits up in the stands and just pick one player for the whole practice and just run the stopwatch and see how long they have the puck in their stick. <coughs> for practice. You'd be very surprised. A lot of times it's three, four, five minutes. And why I'm telling you this is because you're gonna to have to structure and think your practices differently so you're doing drills where they have the puck in their stick a lot more, instead of just going around the circle and taking the shot. They have the puck in their stick for seven seconds, you know, and they do that how many times? Four times before you go to the other side. You got a minute there, then you're gonna be doing some type of skating or whatever, so I always try to have practices where the kids have the puck on their stick for a minimum of 20 minutes we're doing stick out. I mean, even 10 minutes where you're just going goal line to far blue line, someone can work with the goalies, back and forth, forward, backwards, skating, but they have a puck in their stick the whole time. That's how they're gonna acquire the skills. And it's just patience and persistence. Yes? I wanted you to even start doing that, because I mean, is, is light more important teaching them skating and lots of puck? Absolutely. <laughs> but you gotta, you gotta introduce the puck. You know, mites is more, you know, you're working on the edges, the forward, backward, you're just getting up, stopping both ways, and that's the other thing about stopping. I've had, I don't know how many parents through the years, and a kid can only stop one way. You know, they're at mites. Listen, I've been doing this a long time, I've never seen a kid, by the time they finish their first year of sports, doesn't know how to stop both ways. So, you pick your battle somewhere, and just tell them to tap the brakes, everything will be okay. Um, 